Next on BYUSN, what's the winning ticket for Cougar football at TCU? Potential scenarios that may swing the game tomorrow in Fort Worth. And ESPN's Brock Osweiler will join us to help preview tomorrow's game. What will Josh Hoover do in his first start for the Frogs? Plus, we'll look ahead to another wild weekend in the Big 12 with our Big 12 Roundup and make our prop picks for BYU at TCU. Don't forget the Big 12 preseason poll for men's basketball is out. Where did Mark Pope and the Cougars land in the rundown? It is game day Eve, baby. Welcome to BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Ooh, Friday, October 13th. My, my son was born on a Friday the 13th. He's turned out okay so far, but he's only five. Welcome to the program. I am Jerem Jordan in Provo. He is Spencer, Spencer Linton in Fort Worth, where once upon a time, in the first ever meeting, Spencer, between these two teams, it was in Fort Worth, and it's called the cricket game. There were a bunch of crickets on the field. Any sign of any crickets? <laughs> Here in Utah, we got rid of those a long time ago with some seagulls. Yeah, I can confirm there are no crickets, at least not visible to the eye right now. The field looks pristine, but just in case, I've contacted the local aviary in the Fort Worth area. We're going to gather all the seagulls and just let them hover around to make sure things are good for tomorrow. So I got you covered, bro. Prayer and seagulls, the, the ultimate opposition of crickets. <laughs> All rise and shout. Let's get after it. It's time for What's Trending. Excited for this, uh, this stretch that's coming ahead of us. Focused and hungry and desperate, I think, to play well. We're seeking our first uh, Big 12 road victory. BYU at TCU tomorrow coming off the bye week. You're at... Amon G. Carter Stadium there in Fort Worth where BYU's played a handful of games. First time these two teams meeting in Texas since Jerry's World back in 2011. Tickets hard to come by. No single game tickets available uh, for BYU fans on the primary market. Secondary markets certainly you can go to StubHub and whatnot and get those. So Spence, let's have a little fun with the ticket situation. Make some st statistical statements and then decide whether that factoid would be okay. a winning ticket in tomorrow's game. I will begin. What if BYU rushes for 99 yards? Jerem, this is a winning ticket for BYU because you probably need to factor in that, I don't know, Keaton Slovis is going to take a couple of sacks and there will be some lost yards there and maybe there's one big play that goes for negative 10 or 15 yards because that's been the case for BYU in multiple games this season. That would mean that the Cougars are rushing for maybe 120 yards. If, if BYU can rush for over 100 yards, taking away the lost yardage from quarterback sacks, this feels like a winning ticket to me because it's trending in the right direction. BYU's offense has, in a way, methodically gotten a little bit better in each of their games, back to back to back to back. So uh, this would be another step in the right direction, pun intended in this regard. Yes, as finally! As BYU tries to push the ball and, and run a little bit. Yeah, baby! I think this is a winning number. Even though it's not a crazy number, it would be, what, 25, 30 yards more than BYU's been averaging rushing the ball per game this season? This feels like, a strangely, a winning number to me. What do you think? You brought up the sacks. Uh, TCU was pretty good the first couple of games. They do not have a sack in the last two games. Um, BYU's only given up six all year. BYU's protected. Keaton so is pretty good. I, T I love the music in the background, by the way. I felt like I just entered heaven or something. <laughs> if it's not a porta potty. Stadium ambiance. Let's go. Um, this is how, I, again, when I enter heaven, if I make it, um, I want it to sound like this. Um, okay, 99 yards. <laughs> is that enough? You know, you know, BYU's been sub 80 in four of five games, which is crazy. Uh, you know, the, the season high is 112 against Sam Houston. Against Cincinnati, we felt like they had a good uh, defensive line. Keaton Slovis felt like 70 would have been enough. 99 is probably a winning ticket. Um, depends if takeaways are playing a big factor or whatnot, but let's go, man. 90, I would take 99. I hate that I'm saying that, but through five games, that's what BYU showed us. Yes, it would be a, a notable increase in rushing yards per game for BYU. They're playing the hype video that they're going to air tomorrow I'm getting before hyped. the game as TCU takes Let's the call. field, by the way. Okay, that's what's happening right now on the big Jumbotron in front of me. <laughs> it's going to be an eventful <laughs> they go hour. they their pregame stuff. I get it. They're trying to throw me off here. Well, guess what? 
I'm not going to be thrown off. I will, We're doing a live show, baby. There's no distraction here. Okay. <laughs> number two, winning ticket numbers. Let's go to the opponent and backup quarterback Josh Hoover for TCU. If he throws for 250 yards, Jerem, is that a winning number for BYU or are the Cougars in trouble if the backup gets to 250 passing? I do feel like that would be trouble because then there'd be a ton of confidence and that means that TCU ran the ball even better maybe because, uh, you know, Josh Hoover, first start, um, you know, th this is a big deal for him. Uh, home game, home uh, favorite, highly recruited, of course, but this is his first start. Dad played in the NFL, you know, so th there's a history there. TCU runs the rock really well, Spence. 192 a game, led by Imani Bailey. 115 a game, 5.7. Like, that, if, if somehow BYU just loads up on the run and makes Josh Hoover beat them and it's only 250, and they hold TCU under 100 or something rushing, perhaps. But 250 feels like a winning number for TCU to me. Yeah, TCU doesn't want Josh Hoover to have to throw for 250 yards. They're going to rely on the run. They have some outstanding backs, and they've got a pretty solid offensive line. They're going to lean heavily into the run game. So if Josh Hoover's throwing for 250, I'm inclined to believe that TCU's playing from behind and they're desperate to score points. To me, that means BYU's got like a double-digit lead in the third and fourth quarter, and now they're just having to chuck it. Because if you're a backup quarterback making your first start, and you're Sonny Dykes, the last thing you want to have to do is to rely on your backup quarterback's arm to get you back in the game, to win the game for you. So no, they're going to lean heavily in the run. I don't see 250 happening if it is 250. TCU is playing from behind, so weirdly, I kind of like the idea of TCU having to throw for more yards because I feel like that would mean they're trailing, and that, this seems like a winning number for BYU because TCU is desperate in that scenario. Maybe I'm crazy, but that's kind of where I'm leaning. I do think you're crazy, but not on this. Um, if it's 250 through three quarters, <laughs> then that's trouble, right? If it's 250 at the end of the game, I see what you're saying. Yes. Next one. Yes. BYU gets 392 yeah. yards of total offense. Woo. So I waffled on this one a little bit this morning because the game where BYU had the most total yards was the one game that BYU lost at Kansas because the Cougars were trailing Kansas and they're trying to chuck it and, and get back in the game in a hurry. But I think if BYU has 392 yards of total offense against TCU, it's going to come in a balanced effort. That absolutely feels like a winning number to me for the Cougars, and it would be a season best, which I would not complain about. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't mind that. 392 yards of total offense on the road in the afternoon, Jerem. That feels like a winning afternoon for me for BYU. Slight correction. Season high is 394 on the total O, but it would be a high against FBS, right? Okay. Um, but, yeah, against Southern Utah, okay, you expect okay. much more. Have yet to get to 400 in a game. 392 is probably enough. But is this team taking the ball away? Is, is BYU, you know, forcing turnovers and not giving it away? Are any of those, if BYU gives it away, are they lethal turnovers like Kansas? Are they playing from behind? 392 could be a, we got some late yards down two scores as well on the BYU side. So I'm not quite sure. I just want to see something crazy. I don't know. It's called 400 yards in a game. I don't know. Am I nuts? I want 400 yards in a game for the BYU offense. <laughs> Come on. It, it hasn't happened. It needs to happen, right? Let's go. Well, TCU, they've gone oh, over 400 yeah, yards Yeah, speaking of, of the times, music, Jeremy. baby. They average 472 yards of total offense to the Horn Frogs. So with the 16th ranked total offense in all of FBS, if they get to 472 against BYU's defense, is that a winning number for the Horn Frogs? Normally it would be. We saw... I'm, I'm so distracted by the music. I'm sorry. Let's go. Cincinnati got to 498 and BYU won. Like, that was so weird to me. But BYU had a pick six in the game. They had multiple takeaways. They had multiple turnovers on downs defensively and in the red zone. Um, yeah, if BYU does that, sure. But I would say if TC gets to 472, that's, that's not good. Although I can see the argument, as we mentioned a couple times here, if BYU's up big and then TCU gets some garbage yards late to cut it to one score or something, sure. But BYU defensively has been pretty stinking good this year, man. I really like where BYU's at. Yes. We'll talk about this at length in just a moment, Jerem. 
but because BYU has had the trends in turnovers and field position working in their favor, it hasn't really mattered with the total yards. So I'm not so concerned if, if TCU climbs over 450. More as I'm more concerned about what BYU does when they are able to create a turnover and with Ryan Rico as a weapon, maybe able to create some field position scenarios. Uh, but I, I, I digress because we need to get to the next question, right? Yes, we do. Uh, what if BYU and TCU are even in turnover margin? I don't like it. I don't like it because it's a road game. <laughs> I think BYU needs something to win on the road like they did at Arkansas, and they need to be plus in the turnover category. If it's even, I kind of feel like the line would hold true and that TCU is a five and a half, six point favorite would probably play out. BYU needs to be plus in the turnover category, in my opinion, for the Cougars to feel good about winning this game and getting to five and one on the season. Is it too much to ask that BYU is plus one in turnovers and not even? Maybe, but that, that to me, even does not feel like a winning ticket for BYU. Where do you stand? No, that one scares me, and I'm just thinking about Space Odyssey 2001 and this, what this music is here, uh, right here. <laughs> In a straight up fight, can BYU throw enough punches and take enough punches when turnovers aren't swinging the game one way? BYU's relied on turnovers to win this year. They do not win at Arkansas or against Cincinnati without them. Uh, the Cougars needed takeaways in three of the four games. You didn't need them against SEU. I don't like even. I don't like even. Um, yes. I, I would like me, plus me one either. or two. And, yeah. and let's be honest, backup quarterback, backup quarterback. BYU needs to create some havoc and create Amen. a turnover with the starter not playing. And TCU has been prone to turn the ball over with interceptions. I know the majority of those are from Chandler Morris, but TCU is prone to do this. Now is the time for BYU to pounce. Can you tell them to turn it up, by the way? All right. Hey, guys, turn it up, please. <laughs> we, we need it a little bit louder. Break it up to 11. <laughs> oh, I think they heard me. I, th I think they just did it, <laughs> OK? We'll finish with this winning ticket number. What if BYU does not win the average starting field position, Jerem? This has been something that the Cougars have been so good with. It means BYU didn't take the ball away much or at all. It means that maybe the punt game was kind of even-ish. Um, those two have contributed to this. It's a big deal. BYU's 50 and 9 in the stock area when they win average starting field position, and all four wins this year have included wins in that area. Yes. Hey, you know, I just had a thought here, too, as we're talking about field position and home field advantage. They've been trying to lock BYU fans out. They know BYU TV's here. They're trying to make this a really tough environment for us, Jerem. But I'm, again, we're not going to be phased. BYU I'm, I'm fans will find phased, their way dude. in, just like we found our way in today. <laughs> I am absolutely phased. <laughs> I, need, I need you to lock in, man. Lock in with me here. Uh, BYU needs to win the starting field position battle. Whoa, okay, wind blowing too. BYU needs to win the field Life position team. battle to feel good about this game. Turnovers, field position. Those are the two things that have gotten BYU to a four and one record. Why would we want to go away from that? No. Let's go Rico and the special team. Uncle Rico gonna punt that ball over them mountains. Okay, last one. What if BYU leads by a field goal or less at halftime? Uh, I like this. Unlike Kansas, where BYU led by Phil Goal ended up losing the game. No, no. I like this. If BYU is leading at halftime, I love their chances to win this game. Yep. I think it's very, very important for BYU to go into the halftime locker room feeling good about this. 88% win percentage under Kalani Sitake when BYU leads at halftime. I, I think that's a really big deal. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know some stats don't really matter. This, this stat feels like it matters a lot to me, Jerem. Of, of having a halftime lead. Kalani and the Cougars, they've, they've been almost lights out when they take that advantage. All right, let's go to topic two. The Big 12 basketball preseason poll is now out for all to see. The Cougars pick to finish, and we called it yesterday, Jerem, second to last, number 13 out of 14 teams. They're just ahead of UCF. Again, like we had speculated yesterday. Is this fair for the Cougars? Probably. Uh, BYU's in the, uh, you know, the coaches are saying, prove me now here with, right? Uh, BYU's got to show it, uh, except for Houston, who's number two and actually got two votes, a.k.a. one from Kansas and somebody else. The max you can get is 13 out of 14 here. Yeah, that's probably fair. Like, 
again, it, it's okay. Like, BYU finished fifth in WCC last year. Why should they be, like, in the top nine or ten here? It's all right. Um, I'm excited to see if BYU can surprise the coaches and us and, and, and be, uh, you know, kind of a top ten team in the league and, and uh, get into the NIT or better. Yeah, I'm totally okay with this. The resume that BYU put together last year would suggest that they deserve to be at number 13. And, and frankly, I said yesterday, I wouldn't be surprised to see BYU pick to finish dead last, but hey, 13 out of 14, just ahead of UCF. BYU didn't go to the NIT like Cincinnati did last year, a team that's just ahead of them. So it feels totally fair to me, and I love the opportunity to exceed expectations. Hey, low expectations, keep them super low, and then let's go, baby. It's cool that they plugged into your uh, your iPhone for this playlist uh, we've heard the last couple of minutes, which has been good. Our question of the day is this. Call your shot. What is your game day guarantee for tomorrow's BYU at TCU football game? Lead us there, Spence. All right, uh, let's go with this. Michael Croxall on Instagram says, after the bye week, BYU will rush for more than 150 Ooh. yards, Jerem. Wow. Whoa. That would be nice. Like, if, if this BYU run game could get going, that'd be incredible. Dallin Worthington on X. BYU will be plus one in the turnover margin and rush for a modest but acceptable 120. That is modest and that is super acceptable because that would be a season high. Against TCU's 3-3-5 defense, it is certainly different to have the odd front and the five DBs just constantly yeah. in nickel. Just keep an eye on those backers and, like, where, where is that strong safety sitting, right? It's going to be interesting defensively for Keaton Slovis, who can really use his expertise and experience to hopefully pick apart the TCU defense enough for a win here. Hey, can we just call Bronco Mendenhall, who used to run the 3-3-5, and just collaborate with him? Kalani gives him a call and says, hey, Bronco, what's the best way to attack the 3-3-5? Can you give us the ins and outs? Let's go. Let's, let's get together as BYU coaches. Come on, Bronco. I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I'll take anything right at any sort of insight. Okay, Caleb Plu on X. Says Darius Lassiter is Keaton Slovis' primary target and cashes in another touchdown. Mm. That guy knows how to make a play on the road, and you can take that to the bank. I like it. I like it. More Darius Lassiter. Let's go. Okay, uh, continue to weigh in on X, Facebook, and Instagram. Get ready for BYU and TCU live from Fort Worth and Provo coming up tomorrow on BYUSN Game Day at 1.30 Eastern Time featuring guest analyst Austin Colley. It's going to be awesome tomorrow. Coming up. ESPN analyst Brock Osweiler, he's on the call for the game on ESPN. He tells us what he's seeing on film ahead of BYU and TCU as BYU Sports Nation continues from Fort Worth and Provo. I like the way the culture is going. I love the leadership in our program. We're hoping that we'll start off fast from right from the beginning. I think we're a great fit against TCU. I think our size and our physicality is... I just like to see more points on the board. You can count on our players, their energy and their effort. I don't approach it like we're an underdog. I approach it like we're the man on top. BYU at TCU coming up tomorrow afternoon on ESPN. And the analyst on the call is former Arizona State great and NFL quarterback Brock Osweiler, who's on BYU Sports Nation. Brock, welcome to the program, man. Good to have you. Great to be on. Thank you for having me. Let's talk about this matchup because it's uh, interesting. BYU 4-1 and one, coming off uh, a bye week. Been an interesting team. The stats don't scream 4-1, and one, but BYU is. TCU, obviously, two straight losses, and uh, Chandler Morris out, Josh Hoover in. What do you make of this matchup in Fort Worth tomorrow? Yeah, I think it's really intriguing. And, and I think the biggest thing that, you know, first needs to be said, and it's kind of what you just mentioned, um, you know, BYU stats, they're, they're not jumping off the charts by any means. But I think the thing that does matter, um, you look at the points per game, and you look at turnover margin. And, and what do those two things say? It says that they're a well-coached team. You know, I think that's something that it has just kind of been expected with Kalani and, and just, you know, what he's done over the years there during his tenure. Um, they're going to be well-coached. They're going to be disciplined, um, technically sound. Um, and, and I think that's what matters. So sometimes you got to remove all the stats and just kind of focus on the wins and losses, points per game, and turnover margin is always going to say a lot. When you look at TCU and you talk about this matchup, you know, they're reeling for a win. You're talking about a team, as we all know, um, played for the Big 12 title last year um, and ultimately played for the national title um, and, and losing to Georgia. So um, there was high expectations for that team coming into the season. They're on a two-game losing streak, obviously one of those coming at home two weeks ago against West Virginia. And this is just 
nobody around the TCU program expected them to be here at this point. So you have a TCU team without their starting quarterback, backs against the wall. Um, they have great leadership. They have a great head coach from Sonny Dykes. Um, so they expect to win. And, and I expect them to play hard. And then, you know, when you talk about BYU coming off a of bye week, um, you know, there were, there were some things, obviously, the coaching staff wanted to clean up specifically offensively with the run game. Um, and so it's going to be interesting to see if those things did get cleaned up and if uh, BYU travels on the road with, with their physical brand of football. It is wild that BYU is 4-1 and one, and it has run for over 80 yards once. Like, the, the sustainability of that model is zero. <laughs> but BYU's <laughs> been able to take the ball away and create short fields, and they have an amazing punter in Ryan Rico. The average starting field position has been a big deal. So do you feel like uh, those two things, are uh, takeaways and average starting field position, are sustainable in the game tomorrow because it feels like that's the model for BYU if the Cougars can't run the ball well? I don't think it's sustainable long term as you talk about the entire Big 12 conference schedule, right? It, it's something that at this point it's got you to four and one. I think good teams find ways to win when it's not always perfect. And that's what BYU's done. So they've shown that they can be a great team. But as you get into the teeth of the schedule, TCU on the road, Texas Tech, Texas, West Virginia, Oklahoma, when you're talking the best teams in the Big 12 conference, I think you really need to get back to your identity, which is being a physical run first team. And then what do you do off of a good run game? Play action shots. And, and I think that's really um, what BYU wants to be. And as you continue to play better opponents in conference play, um, the better the run game is, I think the better the entire offense will be. Talking to ESPN College Football Analyst Brock Osweiler on BYU Sports Nation. For Josh Hoover, this has got to be interesting because last week Chandler Morris hurts the knee, uh, comes in and, and, and struggles a bit, is playing from behind already. Now he has the first start and the first opportunity here. You would think that Imani Bailey is going to get more carries than he gets normally, but what do you think the focus is going to be like for him in a TCU offense that asks a lot of its quarterback, especially with that tempo? Yeah, you know, Josh showed some really good flashes um, last week on the road in that loss to Iowa State. Um, you you kind of hit the nail on the head. He came in the game. He had, a, he had an early turnover. He fumbled the very first snap that he was in on. Um, and it was a really shaky start, to, to you know, put it bluntly. Uh, but the thing that I think was most impressive about Josh, you know, the game couldn't have started any worse for him. But as it went on and as he played more plays and more series, he got more and more comfortable, and he really flashed some good stuff. He, he made some really good throws from the pocket. He displayed some really good accuracy. He made some good decisions. Um, you know, he threw one touchdown on the game. Really should have had two. Um, there was a, a running back that could have helped him out with. That was pretty much a, essentially a walk-in touchdown if he just caught the football. Um, so although the start wasn't great for Josh, he definitely flashed some signs that he could be a, a player for, for the Horn Frogs. And I would assume with a full week of practice of knowing that you're going to start the game, having the game plan built around your skill set rather than Chandler Morris's, um, I would expect him to play a solid game. But once again, until you get out there and, and um, you know, in the heat of the moment and, and you know, you get hits and, and the pressure's on to make plays, you never really know what a young quarterback's going to do, but, but Josh certainly flashed some signs that, that he could be a good player for TCU. The solid verbal on X, still not used to that, Twitter, uh, tweeted yesterday <laughs> that the points per drive from last year to this year for defenses across the country, BYU is the fourth most improved in the country. This defense is way better than it's been. Mm -hmm. It's really helped set up the offense for BYU. What are you seeing on film of this BYU defense that has put itself – it, it in position to win some games. Yeah, you know, I was really fortunate to be able to call your guys' bowl game um, against SMU last year in New Mexico. So I was able to digest a lot of film from last year's defense. And now flipping to this week's game, watching the defensive film, um, it really is a polar opposite defense. And, and why is the defense so different for BYU this year? It really comes down to one person. It's, it's Jay Hill, your new defensive coordinator, coming over from Weber State. And it's the defense that he's implemented um, into your program. It's a very aggressive defense. It, it reminds me a lot of the year that uh, we won the Super Bowl in Denver back in 2015 
and our defensive coordinator was Wade Phillips. And, and Wade's whole deal was we're going to play a lot of man coverage, cover one. We're going to get an extra safety around the box to help stop the run. And we're going to be aggressive. We're going to pin our ears back. We're going to play with our hair on fire. We're going to be tough and we're going to be physical. And when I turn on the BYU defensive film under Jay Hill, that's what I see. I see a lot of cover one, man coverage. That strong safety comes down into the box because ultimately he's responsible for the tight end if he releases out into a pass route. But if he plays run, now you already have the extra box defender down in there to stop the run. You see a defense, you know, playing with a lot of confidence. Uh, Tyler Batty, you know, really jumps off on film. Your, your linebacking crew, Max Tooley, A.J., um, there's a lot of guys that, that stand out to me. Jacob Robinson's playing really good football for you guys. Um, but it's really, it's, it's ultimately the aggressive nature, the man coverage. And, and then it's, Jay is really signaling something, something to offenses each week. He's saying, we're going to dictate how we want to play the game rather than being in a zone defense, playing on our heels. We're going to play downhill and come at you. Talking to Brock Osweiler of ESPN on BYU Sports Nation. The Big 12 has been wild, man. Like Oklahoma, clearly the best team at the moment. Texas seems to be right there. Everybody has a loss in league through three games. But Oklahoma, and then last night you have this crazy Houston-West Virginia Hail Mary win. Um, Kansas State lost to Oklahoma State. Like everybody has, a, you know, a perception. Oklahoma is the only team unscathed. What do you make of this league through three games? Well, it's a lot of fun to watch, and, and I, I think it's uh, very far from deciding who's going to be there at the Big 12 title game in, in Dallas uh, come December. You kind of hit the nail on the head. There's, there's Oklahoma and Texas at the top, and then from there, you got this clump of teams uh, really deciding who wants to take that next step into the top caliber. You know, I would say Kansas is, is probably the next closest, um, obviously, you guys had the loss on the road to them. So that's kind of why I give them the notch above you guys. Um, I think BYU is right behind Kansas. You know, you would say West Virginia was in that talk. You know, two weeks ago, they go down to Fort Worth. They play a very physical football game. They hold TCU to three second half points and they, and they pull off the upset on the road. But then like you just mentioned, they lose on a Hail Mary last night um, down in Houston. So I don't know who West Virginia is yet. Texas Tech came into the season with big time expectations um, under Coach McGuire. And, you know, I'd say at this point in the season, they've yet to meet those expectations. I think they have a couple loss, losses, excuse me, on their resume that they weren't expecting, especially the one on the road to Wyoming. And then you have this Kansas State team sitting there that, that won the Big 12 last year, um, but then they lose to Oklahoma State last week. So, um, I guess that's a long way to say that the Big 12 is it's, it's, it's an exciting conference to watch. It's going to keep you on your toes. I think you know who Oklahoma and Texas, you know, who those football teams are going to be this year. Now we're just waiting to see which team wants to step in there and, and also contend for the Big 12 title. Well, good stuff. And you would know uh, TCU having called that West Virginia two, game two weeks ago, two blocked field goal attempts in the fourth. It was a yeah. wild one. Perhaps we'll have the same level of wild in a Big 12 game tomorrow at 3.30 Eastern on ESPN. Brock, have a great call, and thanks for joining us on the program. Anytime. Thank you for having me on. Brock Osweiler of ESPN. Get your pregame fix on BYU Radio tomorrow at 1.30 Eastern time with Jason Shepard and the gang to get you ready for BYU and TCU. Old whack and Mountain West teams renewing a rivalry? Question mark? Competitive rivalry? There's not a lot of hatred there. I'm not sure we can use the R word quite yet. Soccer takes care of business coming up in the whip. Cougars in the NFL preview and men's hoops in the Big 12 preseason poll. It's all coming up in the whip. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. On game day eve, I am Jerem. He is Spencer. Hey, you're in a new location. Looks, looks good, man. Hey, how's it going? Hey, listen, we're a mobile unit. We're willing to yeah. adapt, make second half adjustments, Jerem, and then we do that to go and win the game. So we've taken on the philosophy of Kalani and Jay, and, and we're going to make some solid adjustments, and we're going to win here today. Okay, we will not be denied in Fort Worth. We will not be denied. Of what TCU decides to do with their music. I, I, I don't know if you're wearing cowboy <laughs> boots or something, or if you fully embraced it. But anyway, uh, let's get to today's headline. All right, let's start with BYU football. Gavin Hurd, 
the music, the ambiance of Amon G. Carter Stadium. They're in Fort Worth to take on TCU. Big 12 road contest and a big one. The Cougars are a five and a half point underdog. Pre-game coverage begins on BYU TV and BYU Radio at 1.30 p.m. Eastern time. Cougars in the NFL. Andy Reid's Chiefs beat the Broncos last night. Weird score 19 to 8. Zach Wilson and the Jets host the Eagles. Puka Nakua and the Rams host the Cardinals. Fred Warner and the Niners play Sione Taki Taki and the Browns. Cougars in the NFL part two. Taysom Hill, Daniel Sorensen, and the New Orleans Saints play in Houston against the Texans. We're headed there to do some interviews. Tyler Algier and the Atlanta Falcons play Dax Milne's Commanders. Kyle Van Noy and the Baltimore Ravens take on the Tennessee Titans. Blake Freeland and the Colts matched up against the Jacksonville Jaguars. And Jaron Hall, Kairos Tonga, and the Minnesota Vikings will face Justin Fields and the Chicago Bears. How does Taysom Hill see out of the helmet at that angle? It feels like his eye line would be low. Anyway, BYU men's basketball picked to finish 13th out of 14 teams in the Big 12 preseason poll as voted by the coaches and released this morning. Kansas is the preseason pick nearly unanimous, got 12 of a possible 13 votes. Wait a minute, there's 14 teams. You can't vote for your own team. Kansas voted for Houston with its one vote. Number eight, BYU women's soccer, the Road Warriors, Jerem. They beat Oklahoma State in Stillwater 3-0 yeah. last night behind goals from Brecken Mozingo, Ellie Walbrook, and Allie Fryer. The win improves BYU's record to 12-1-3. 5-0-3 in Big 12 play. Four Big 12 wins have happened on the road. Up next, final road game of the season at Oklahoma. Second place in the league now. Let's go. Number nine, women's volleyball hosts Texas Tech tonight and tomorrow, both at 9 Eastern time. Tonight's match is on ESPNU. Tomorrow's match is on Big 12 now on ESPN+. Plus. Number three, BYU men's cross country is in the Nutty Comb Invitational this morning in Wisconsin. And number six, BYU women's cross country racing in Virginia in the XC23 pre-nationals event. Men and women swim and dive are with you in a dual meet this weekend at TCU. Make it over there as well, won't you? All right, BYU baseball plays at Utah today. A couple of seven inning scrimmages. You can listen to the games on BYU Radio with our guy Jason Shepard on the call starting at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Those are the headlines. Let's whip it. Cook Whip Around is presented by Marisk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Let's start with this. BYU is the seventh most pass-heavy offense out of all Power 5 teams in the country. They're passing on 55% of offensive snaps. Does this number need to be higher or lower tomorrow? against TCU. Hopefully it's lower. That means BYU is able to run the rock a little bit. Maybe they have a lead. Maybe they're milking some clock. 55% is a high number. And yep. this isn't like Ty Detmer slinging it 45 times a game type BYU offense. So I'm hoping it's lower. Yeah, I'd like it closer to 50-50. I mean, if it's on par and it's at 55% again, whatever. Again, BYU's won the majority of the games they play this year with these numbers. So yeah, great. But if it's higher, then I think there is real cause for concern. So I'm with you, I'd like to be a little lower. 50-50 feels good. We're all going for that balanced effort. All right, Two-Face. Deion Sanders called the late start games the stupidest <laughs> thing ever and said, who wants to stay up until 8 o'clock for a darn game? Uh, he added that he's excited to get out of the Pac-12 because of these late night games. Is he in for a surprise next year in the Big 12? Absolutely, especially when he's taking on teams in that mountain time zone, right? Like, I, I feel like that's just designated for Big 12 after dark on ESPN. Like the Pac-12 is gone, so now it just becomes the Big 12 after dark. And Arizona State, Arizona, Utah, BYU, Colorado, those are the teams that are gonna be most likely to play in that late slot. Give me all the night games, Jerem. Give me all the night games. 26 and three at home since 2019 when it's six or Come later. Come on, man. Come on. All right, on to women's volleyball. What's the chance that the ninth-ranked Cougars win out? They don't lose again. I mean, it could happen, but they still have to play Kansas uh, in a couple weeks. Iowa State's coming to town next week for a pair. They are a ranked team at 25 right now. Kansas ranked as well. But the tough matches with Texas are done. You already beat Baylor and Houston in your one-offs at home. So I would say the hardest, some of the hardest are done. BYU totally could win out and then be outside the top, you know, yeah. five or six host the first two rounds, and then have to travel on the road probably for the Sweet 16 should they get there. 
sport by nature is just so fickle and, and volleyball sometimes can be a really weird sport with some bounces going the wrong direction and, and just some things working against you. So I, I think BYU is really good. It's tough to win out, even if Texas has already been taken care of and, and those game, those matches are over. So I'd say probably like 40% chance, but that's pretty good to win out 40%. BYU is a good team, they could do it. Women's soccer two points behind Texas Tech for first place in the Big 12 with two games remaining. Those two tied recently. BYU plays at Oklahoma as mentioned, UCF at home, uh, at home. Red Raiders host Oklahoma State, play at Iowa State. What chance do you give BYU of winning it's the Big 12 regular season title? Oh man, you know what? The tie against Cincinnati at home really hurts. Yep. Because if BYU wins that game, now they're tied with Texas Tech for first place. I like BYU's chances to win the final two games. Long road trip for UCF to close out the regular season to have to come to Provo, and BYU's been unbeatable, frankly, on the road. So BYU's going to win their final two. They, they need some help to get Texas Tech. Um, I think Texas Tech's going to have to lose a game. I, I don't know, maybe 30%. It's, it's an uphill climb. How do you feel about it? I don't really care that much. Let me tell you why. There's a conference tournament. We're not used to this. Um, if, if you win the regular season, hey, that's amazing. If you don't, that's okay. You have the conference tournament. It's not a huge deal. I would rather BYU kind of get to the Sweet 16 or Elite Eight than, than win those trophies. Although winning trophies is awesome. Don't get me wrong. But if you're like, BYU wins both, but yeah. they're out in the second round, well, hey, I'd rather get to the Sweet 16 than win those. Jeremy, I can't believe we're going to discuss this. West Coast Conference basketball. St. Mary's is picked to win the WCC over Gonzaga. Do you care at all about this? No, next. BYU Photo added a few picks from Monday. <laughs> this one caught our eye. I'm getting my one made shot off, uh, mainly because you weren't guarding me. You and Tyson Jex are watching. What face are you making here? What is this? This, this is the face, Jerem. It is one of hope and optimism uh -huh. that my co-host will attempt and make the shot that he has attempted to put up. Yeah, so this is, this is I think, my overall look on life and BYU sports right there, summed <laughs> up in one facial expression. You'll see that my eye angle, th thank you for that, that uh, hopeful draw as, as the opponent there. You'll see my angle, eye angle is very steep. It was, it was because it was like a four-footer. So uh, I did make the shot. I, t I think I missed yeah, another yeah. one, but, but ball was sticky. We did, not, we did not get a lot of shots off you and I. <laughs> Next year, next year. <laughs> RW3 yes, took over, year. it was awesome. Okay, number nine women's volleyball hosts Texas Tech in home matches tonight and tomorrow. As mentioned, ESPNU tonight, then tomorrow, myself, Amy, Kenzie will be on the call 9 Eastern on Big 12 Now on ESPN Plus. After the break, prop picks and the Big 12 Roundup. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Welcome back to an eventful remote. Hey, hey, what's, you're wide enough. We don't need more. Uh, welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Time for the Big 12 Roundup. Yeehaw. Where's the All cowboy right, hat? Where are the boots? With, uh, this. Hey, did you see what happened between West Virginia and Holy Houston crap. last night, Jerem? It was wild. The Mountaineers were favored by two and a half points, okay? Yeah. Heard they that. led with 12 seconds to go. They scored a crazy touchdown, 50 yards on fourth and 10. They're going to walk away with the win, right? It's 39 35. No. Houston throws a Hail Mary from 50 yards away and walks it off at home to win 41 39. I pick Houston. I get the point, and you lose on your super pick in the most improbable of fashion. Yes, I did. That was crazy. I'm completely distracted by you just being covered up. Every <laughs> <laughs> Today has been an all-timer. Okay, next. <laughs> you just gonna hold it up now? Just fl you gonna flex on him, bro? Yeah. Why? Why? No, yeah, absolutely. Come on. Come on. You've been doing your hundred push-ups today. I'm doing my part for the crew. Let's go, I'm baby. Doing my part for the crew. Well, okay. Uh, Let's go. Number 23, Kansas, favored by three and a half against Oklahoma State. Who you got? I think Oklahoma State at home, with Kansas playing with their backup quarterback, I like the Cowboys here. 
Maybe they figured something out at home against Kansas State. They got some confidence. If Kansas had Jalen Daniels in that starting quarterback position, I would take Kansas here. But I'm taking Oklahoma State in the points. They can still lose here by three, but I like the Cowboys at home to be competitive against Kansas. Give me Kansas. They put up 51 against UCF last week with Jason Bean. Let's go. All right, Iowa State. Four and a half point underdog at Cincinnati. Bearcats at home. Do they bounce back after losing at BYU? Bearcats well rested. Iowa State going to come down from the high in the emotion of the Jack Trice 100th anniversary game, beating TCU. Give me Cincinnati. Yes, we're on to Cincinnati, Jerem. And in fact, I'm so on to Cincinnati, I'm making them my super pick. Ooh. The Bearcats are my super pick. They will win and maybe win convincingly against Iowa State. Kansas State, Texas Tech, Red Raiders favored by one and a half. That's who's coming in next week for homecoming week. Who you got? Man, I'm not sure how your Kansas State and you respond after losing at Oklahoma State last week, and now you got to go on the road and play in Lubbock against a team that's riding a huge wave of confidence. The Red Raiders are at home. Yeah, they've got the mojo. I'm taking Texas Tech at one and a half over Kansas State. Me too. I like running back Todd Brooks. Four 100-yard rushing games in a row. That's never happened at Texas Tech. Remember, they, they chuck it a lot. Then for Kansas State, Will Lee's out at corner. Jacob Parrish, questionable as well. So I like the Red Raiders also. All right. Let's go to BYU at TCU. The line was at six. Now it's down to five and a half. Are you taking the Cougars with the points, or do you feel like TCU in an afternoon game is going to handle their business at Amon G. Carter State? Man, 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 before six. I'm the one pushing that. Uh, I have BYU at least covering, if not winning, Spence. Um, to me, this is kind of a toss up, but BYU's got to show up. They got to get some takeaways. They got to do the average starting field position thing. This is, of course, unless they all of a sudden just break yeah. out and run for 200 or something and control the game. Now some play action with Keaton Slovis. That would be nice, but I do have BYU at least covering. Yeah, I think it just feels like a lot. Uh, five and a half with a backup quarterback in play? I, I don't know. Maybe we've driven the narrative so much that BYU doesn't play well in the afternoon that we're just setting people up. I've tried to avoid okay. it all show. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. Let's all believe the BYU has no chance. They have no chance to win because it's an afternoon game. Yeah, well, we'll see. We're just setting you up for something good. I'm taking BYU with the points here for sure. And we've never said that. We've just said 9 and 13 and after. We, didn't, we just said that. We didn't say BYU's got no shot. They won nine games. Exactly. They won nine of those. They're not 0-22. Exactly. Come on. Come on. Okay. Yes. That is the Big 12 round. It's almost a coin flip. Come on. Yee-haw. Prop picks now. Number one, over under two and a half total rushing touchdowns between BYU and TCU. TC likes to run the ball a lot, yep. and if they're close to the goal line, they're going to try and run it in, especially with a backup quarterback. Why would you do that to your backup quarterback? Hand it off to your talented running backs. Yeah, on the combined, yes, over two and a half here. Yeah, I, I'm going to go under on this. I just think uh, it's just not going to turn out that way in this one. Um, it's going to be under. Really? And I want to be different from you anyway. Okay. Just, we're all the same this way. <laughs> all right. How about over under one and a half turnovers forced by the BYU defense? Over. Um, if this is a game BYU wins, they've been plus seven, minus three in the one loss. I go over because I think that's how BYU can win the game. TCU has been turnover prone, so I, I, I think that your logic is pretty sound, but maybe it's just plus one. Like, just give me plus one, and I think BYU has a chance to win on the road. I think it's going to be just under. The Cougars will force one turnover against TCU. Who will lead BYU in total yards? LJ Martin, Chase Roberts, or the field? Chase Roberts has been the Y factor for the season. I'm not going away from him. I got Chase Roberts as the man to lead BYU in total yards. He is Keaton Slovis' favorite target. He is a big play machine for the Cougars. And TCU, I don't know. Listen, they've got some gaps in the defense a little bit in the past game. Chase Roberts could take advantage. What do you got? I have the field, and basically we're saying total offense minus pass yards, so not Keaton Slovis, unless he rushes for more yards than L.J. Martin or Chase Roberts have right. receiving. I go the field. Okay. Will BYU score in each of the four quarters tomorrow? They have a 17-quarter scoring streak and an 18 of 20. I say why not? All four, baby. Yes. 
Oh man. I would love it. Gosh, I just don't think it's gonna happen. That, that's, that's tough. Like, weird things happen in games. Like, BYU's gonna have a big quarter or two, but it's one of the weirder streaks going. I, I don't think it's gonna continue tomorrow against TCU. Full disclosure, I didn't either, but we had to be different on a couple. And last but not least, will a BYU, <laughs> <laughs> will a BYU player not named Keaton Slovis attempt to pass? Oh gosh, I love trick plays so much. I want to say yes, I really do. I hope Aaron <laughs> Roderick dials something up tomorrow, and I'm wrong here. But no, I don't think I don't think there's going to be somebody else besides Keaton Slovis throwing a pass against TCU. Real quick, besides Parker Kingston, who's the other player who's throwing a pass this year for BYU? Uh, was it Isaac Rex? No. No. Who threw the pass? Who threw the pass Martin. back to Keaton? LJ LJ Martin it was has LJ a two-yard completion. There you go. Two yes. Keaton Slovis. So there you okay. go. Yeah, yeah. Big 12 basketball media days coming up next week. We will be in Kansas City, Missouri. Andy Reid, where you at, dog? Tuesday, women's uh, basketball media day. Wednesday is the men. Let's go. Next Tuesday and Wednesday on BYU Sports Nation. Who gets today's rise and shout out? It's a special one. We'll tell you about it from volleyball. This is BYU Sports Nation from Fort Worth and Promo. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation, live from windy Fort Worth, Texas. Jerem's back in studio being Provo, Utah. Before we get to the question of the day, I just need to point out that as we were meandering about Amy G. Carter Stadium, I found a cricket, a mm. big juicy one too, Jerem. Oh, so wow. I have located the cricket problem. I okay. have eliminated said cricket problem. Excuse okay. me? Get out of here, Jiminy. <laughs> you got no business. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have like a top hat and a cane? That's weird. Our question of the day, call your oh. shot. What's your game day guarantee for BYU TCU? Jonathan uh, Hawk on X, super fan. BYU have at least 100 more passing yards than TCU. Okay. Okay. I like that one. I like that one. I liked it for sure. Okay, Nick Bright on Instagram. BYU plus two in turnover margin, and Jacob Robinson with another interception. Whoa. Mm. BYU's minus 25 uh, to TCU in passing yards per game, just for reference. At Dallin underscore Olsen on X. BYU would score more than 35 points. Now, that would be nice. They've done that against Southern Utah, Arkansas, and exactly 35 against Cincinnati. 35 would be a winning number, although it is the Big 12 and TCU. You never know. Our elite voice of the day is this, presented by PAX Healthcare Elevated. Jordan uh, Long on Facebook. What did he say, Spence? All right, Jordan Long adds, simple, BYU wins. <laughs> That's, That's it. That's the game day That's guarantee. guarantee. Hey, as a five and a half, six point dog, 27.6% chance on ESPN FPI, that would be nice because yep, we're yep. still weirded out by the line and the percentage chance win. I understand it, but I'm like, eh, sure. where TCU's at? Like, two-game losing streak, backup quarterback now? Like, seriously? BYU coming off some rest. BYU being pretty good under Kalani after a bye week, too. Like, all of those factors. Let's change this afternoon narrative, baby. Guaranteed win in the afternoon. Let's go. Let's in this Taka era, Cougar stats, uh, I'm going to twist it. 4-0 when the starting quarterback was the same starter from the beginning of the season. So th there you go. Today's Rise and Shoutout is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. It is the pink game tonight for breast cancer awareness for women's volleyball. Certainly this is important to this team on two fronts. One, Gay Mare, a longtime athletic trainer for BYU who passed away in 2010 of breast cancer. BYU remembers her each and every year specifically by planting tulips outside the Smith Field House. It is personal and it matters. And then as you see, Heather Olmstead writing dad. Her dad, Rick, longtime uh, respected coach and official in NCAA volleyball, has breast cancer. 1% of men comprise those who have breast cancer. Heather Olmstead, it's very personal. Rick's doing well, we hear. She wears yeah. blue. Tonight's the pink game. She will wear blue. And certainly, uh, in, many of us have been impacted by those with cancer. So we are thinking of them, and tonight will be a special moment. Our right, thanks to today's guest, Brock Osweiler. Sorry, Dennis, we ran out of time. All right, BYU Sports Station game day tomorrow. Join us. 
as we go live from Texas, 1.30 p.m. Eastern to kick off two hours of fun on BYU TV and BYU Radio. For Spencer in Texas, I'm Jeremy in Utah. Shout out to Dave Connolly. See you tomorrow for pregame, as mentioned. Go Cougs! Pull off the upset and do it in the afternoon.